Intel, there's some homework. Man, the truth is yeah. off the chain. It's a fucking classic. It's LB and my, and my cousin's group Chronicles, which I didn't even know until recently. Really? Yeah. Basically, yeah. More serendipity going on yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So that tune so I thought, when I heard that tune, I thought, hmm, have I confused that? What I'm getting from this song, have I confused that with my hip-hop beats? Uh -huh. Then I'm going to create my own genre, sublow. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I get the rave bass line uh -huh. with the hip-hop beats. Uh -huh. That's how Sublo comes. Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. You don't need to be anywhere else, I'll tell you, 500 and a half podcast time. Uh, nearly a thousand videos on this piece as well. Oh, throwing them out. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. To some of you that aren't uh, in the know, this may be just me throwing out a whole heap of words. <laughs> but to the trained, this is a gentleman that's left an indelible mark. Uh, on the UK music scene uh, and the street art scene as a whole from uh, Rich No Limits. Moving on into uh, Sub Low with uh, the Black Ops, um, pre-grime and dubstep, yeah, he was the soundtrack. <laughs> Moving into hip hop, um, dance, uh, Freedom is the uh, new record label and we're here to talk about his uh, life and times and more. <laughs> he goes by the name of Johnny Cat. Well, you right. Bless my G. <laughs> Glad to be back. You know yeah, I mean? it's the second time, isn't it? It's been a bit, it's been a while, man. Been a while. Been... Last time I came, I had a back injury. You did have a I was, back injury. I was injury. taking painkillers like sweets, man. Yeah, that, yeah. Doing that interview. Yeah, big shout out to Insane as well. Yeah, yeah, big up, big up, big up, big uh, up. That's funny you say that because uh, it did cross my mind as you were coming. I thought, damn, I've got a wife. He's got bad back still. Shit. No, I'm alright now. I'm alright now. Right now. God, for God blessing, but yeah. You are very much in about your health, aren't you? You, you, you got, yeah, you got to be now, man. Yeah, yeah definitely. I might explain it. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I was, I was out for two years that time. Mm. Just for being doing lots of studio work, leaning forward, sitting with the wrong posture, nearly took me out of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had to do a full operation. And I was avoiding the operation because if I do an operation, it's 50 50, I walk again. Wow. So, so I was avoiding it. And then it got, the pain got so bad. I mean, they gave me some steroid injection. When the steroid wore off, mm. what happened? I took, they took the steroid injection and they said, move around, become agile. Yeah. Why, why you can't feel the pain? So I was doing that. But what it was, sometimes it can go, sometimes it's good for you, sometimes it's bad, because you're doing stuff for what your back shouldn't be doing. And yeah. your back's in pain, mad pain, but it's yeah. been disguised. But when the injection wore off, I was crippled, man. I couldn't move nothing. Was this like only created, that, that impact, was that created just by sitting down? Yeah, it's a, it was a long, it was a, it was a cause I'm in the studio, I'm always leaning forward. So my back, where your back was to arch inwards, my back arched outwards. Whoa. So, and then um, it all happened at Royal Oak. I jumped over a wall at Royal Oak, landed funny, and that triggered it. And I couldn't, couldn't align my back back again. That started it, and then one thing led to another. Then I, was, then I was lying down. Then I was like, over COVID, I was just stuck in a stuck in a, a wooden door, lying down, flat, couldn't walk nowhere. And then uh, oh, pain got so bad, I had to do, I had to just do the operation just to get rid of the pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll deal with the situation after that. Yeah, but, yeah. So, but yeah, got, for good willing, it all come out good. So now I live life to the fullest. Yeah. No stopping. Yeah, you seem in much more higher spirits. Yeah, man, it's all good, man. I love when the sun's out today, so it's all good. Man. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, West is best. You, uh, one of the originators. Like, no, okay, what no one says. The yeah. buck stops with my gentleman I, here. I, I always say that boy, buy one house in West, you buy two houses out. <laughs> <laughs> I always said that way back in the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean, but yeah, from West, but yeah, London's London now. Lond London's it's all kind of. I say London's all one, one zone now. To win to connect. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. a one zone, yeah, isn't yeah, one it? Zone, and we yeah. like to keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, well, we might as well just go right back to the early beginnings. I mean, we've talked about this before, if you want to check the other podcast, but to be quite honest, this is a more in-depth one, isn't it? Tell me about that early, early era of, uh, of hip-hop in the UK. Oh, early. Woo! What do I remember? I remember as a youth, uh, my first thing I remember... 
Mm. So what do I wait? Let me go back to my really what go I first. Go back to those recesses. The first thing that hit you that you remember. That, there's obviously there's obviously times before then, but as I, when I go back to like my childhood memory, I remember that uh, what's it? What's that song? Oh, it's, oh what's his name? McLaren. What's his uh, name? Uh, um, Buffalo Girls. That's it. Ooh. I remember seeing that video. Uh, I remember seeing that, and I remember listening to the radio and recording non-stop you know, radio, like pirate radio stations. But that's my memory. When I think of old school, when I think of when I was a kid, I remember Lino, buying Lino, taping it together, break dancing, mm-hmm. trying to break dance. Mm-hmm. Buffalo Girls going running outside. That's my first. I get a flashback. When I think of old school, that comes into my head, that, that video, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then it all springs off from there. Um, but yeah, back in the days, man, I'm lucky to be one of the, the, the first generations to experience hip-hop. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of kids are born in the 90s and... It's a given, isn't it? It's just a given. So we, I saw it from the get go, yeah. from the get get go, what it was and what it became. And um, I, I remember saying before, oh, man, I wish I wish hip hop would become a daily thing where it got played on the radio daily and become like you know, because if it got played on the radio daily, it would become universal to yeah. the world. And look at the stage now. Now we are. That's I mean. crazy that you actually had that. Yeah. Uh, that wish. Yeah. I remember back in the day because radio hip hop back in the day was like. You hear on segments, you might get the odd radio station mm-hmm. here. You listen to um, all the, you know, WBLS, Molly Moore, and all that. Yeah. You, I get I get radio tape sent to me. Really? Yeah. But from the States? Well, I, I've got, listen, listen, I've got a box. <laughs> I've got a box at home, no line. A box, a massive box of New York radio tapes. What? In the 80s. What? Thinking, what can I do? How can I, how can I make money out of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> good. I've, I've, I've got a whole box of all WBLS. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, all of them, you know what I mean? Um, wow. All the old DJs have got a massive box full of tapes. So I had to get tapes sent to me. Uh, From who? Who sent oh, them? I've got a couple, a couple of friends in America. Wow. And then there were some people over here that are older than me. They were, they were sourcing st- and tapes yeah. from America. And then I, I I got lucky where they gave me them. You yeah. know what I mean? And then they, they were given back. So I've got tons of them. Mm. So that was like early 80s. I remember hip hop. Then I remember Mike, was it Mike Allen? Yeah, Mike Allen. Yeah. Right. I remember being in my grand's house on a, I think it was a Friday or Saturday night listening to Mike Allen. On Cap- Capital Radio, you know. That's right. The, the, the OG. Capital the Radio. <laughs> yeah. Mike Kellum was a bad boy. That was, yeah. a, bad, hey, that was a bad boy. I hear stories. I hear stories. Yo, no. That, I, I, I saw, I've got tapes still of Mike Kellum. Have you? Yeah. I'm a hoarder. I, I hold stuff. I am a hoarder. Really? Is yeah. this... Yeah, okay. So self, self-confessed. self Yeah, I'm a hoarder. I've got, I got... Man, I've got stuff. Tell me some of the... Okay, hold hold there. Tell me some of the most unique stuff that you've got outside the tapes. What other things... Because this is a very B-boy thing to do. Yeah, well, yeah. You know what I mean? If you guys if you guys had a movie out, it'd be called Hoard of the Things. No, like, you guys <laughs> hoard shit. No, yeah. No, one thing I do regret not holding is my goose, my goose jacket. Yeah. I got my juice... I went to the States in... Eight, I went to the States in 88. Imagine, I'm only 14, going to New York in 88. Yo! Right? And it was me, State of Art... Oh, nice. Mass, yeah. old school writers, Mass, um, Me State of Art, Rage, some, and two other friends, but, mm. uh, and Foam was there, Foam. Really? Oh, let me give, listen, let me give you a joke about Foam. Yo. Listen to this one. So imagine we're in New York, I'm 14 years old in New York. New York ain't ready for you lot. Uh, and I, 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 I first, that's when I first saw Alpo, the original Alpo, they were talk, you see Alpo, they talk about the internet, I originally yeah. saw them man there with the German hermits on the bikes. I've got all that memories in my head. Wow. I saw all that. Yeah? Wow. I mean, but my, so I'm going to so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a state of mind how New York was. I got off the train and uh, the shuttle from the um, what's it, GFK, yeah? yeah? And I was dressed like a... Because it's my first holiday. It's my first holiday, yeah? <laughs> first time I ever go on vacation yeah. on the plane. So I might make me dressed up kind of English nice, yeah? Like yeah. I was going to church. <laughs> I don't know why I was dressed that way, but I've still got the, I've still got the pictures. <laughs> okay. Right, so we got off the train, the GFK, got the shuttle... And I remember with me, with me, State of Art, Rage, and my friend Kenley, and my other friend, um, um, Darren. Was on the train. And phone. And phone no, no, phone, this is what I'm going to tell you. Okay. Phone went separately. Yeah? Uh, okay. Right? So I'm going to give you the whole how it's, <laughs> okay, how, okay. how God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is, my, this is my first impression of New York. On the JFK shuttle, got off the train, and I know, word of no lie, there was a kid younger than me. Right? I'm 14. He's younger than me. Mm-hmm. You know, what a money that. I mean, I, I, I never see so much money in my life. Because when, you, you, when you're a kid, you don't see money stacked. You don't see it like no, that. You might, you might yeah. have it at the bank. You're not even taught you, that. You, you don't even see it. I said, kid, what a water money. Yeah. And all I remember the kid saying to me, man, you're going to get robbed, nigga. I looked at money, I said, yo, 
shit, I'm changing my clothes, man. Yeah. <laughs> I said, buddy, I said, stay up. He said, buddy, buddy, state of art. I said to him, listen, I'm going to the shop right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I bought my b-boy hat or cap, switched my clothes. That was my first impression. The first person to come up to me said, you're going to get robbed, nigga. A little kid. He had a lot of money in his hand. We had a suitcase and he just come up to me and I thought, this is how New York is. That's New York's different yeah, back then. New York, New York in the 80s was different, man. I, mean, I saw the crack. I saw the crackheads. I didn't know what crackheads were. Yeah. I just saw a lot of people hanging out, the, the, you know, the drug shop. I didn't know what they were. I didn't, only when I came back to London, I realised what I was seeing. Because mm. you, know, you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, so we're in New York. We just landed in New York. We're in New York now. You got Madness here. Yeah? And and when we, when we went in eighty eight, that was the last. That was like the last of the trains that were bombed and graffiti. That's yeah. 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 The, um, the Hell's Angels. Is the Hell's Angels. Wearing the red, what are they called? Oh, Not Hell's Angels. Um, Guardian, but, Guardian Angels. Yeah, yeah, go. Guardian Angels. Yeah, this is where the red berries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the New York subway looks scary as hell. <laughs> it looked like when you see Beach Street, this how it was. Really? Warriors but, shit. Yeah, yeah, Warriors. Bomb to blitz. Bomb. There, there, there was no silver trains. These were the trains. We, we, we saw the red trains. Wow. So they were kind of what, we, we, we saw the dusty. We saw the red ones. Wow. So you know, this is the last era. Of that, you know that that kind of subway art. That shit you see in the eighties movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I saw this as a kid. The red trains, the insides were battered. They look like scary movie. They're like, gonna get robbed. Gonna get robbed nonstop. Can you remember this? Yeah, yeah. Remember, 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 this is this is that holiday I'll never forget because that's when I first experienced leaving the UK. I'll never forget. That was like a dream. I'm going. I'm going to the land of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. So that was my that was my dream to go to New York. Yeah. But I remember seeing the trains all bombed up. So you know. We're there for three or four days, up and down the subways. Yeah. I'm seeing... Now, this is foam. Man. We're in New York City. I'm seeing foam Cold Crush Dukes all over the train lines. What? He was bombing the shit, the shit out of the subway. What? <laughs> Let me tell you, listen. I said, yo, foam's here. No. Look, look he's everywhere. Cold Crush Dukes foam was battering the NYC transit system. We knew, that's how I knew he's in in, in New York. I mean, he was going hard, man. Hard. Really? No, no, no. I was going there. Well, listen, listen. He's going hard. So, remember, there's no mobile phones in them days. There's no, there's no form of internet or contact. Yeah, yeah, We, yeah, we yeah. just see his name all in, up and down the train lines. What? So, about ten, about, about a week into the vacation now, uh, we, um, we's at um, Yankee Stadium. Got, got, got out of the train at Yankee Stadium. Got off the train. I look across, we look across the, the trap platform. It looks like a phone. Now, how New York subway system is massive. How can God put him in the same location <laughs> as us? It works like that, though. Yeah, Yo. at this particular time. So we're like, that's, that's foam. No way. You know, from, yeah, hey, yeah. You know how foam is? Hey, yeah. Guy. Foam, which, like, we're just fucking happy to see him. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we linked up with foam in New York. And that's like a blessing in disguise. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think, I think um, he was staying somewhere, but I think some of some guys from Dam. He was staying in Henry Chamfort's um, um, art gallery, but I think he had some problems with some of the other artists. I think right. they trashed it or something. So then Henry sort of chucked everyone out. So Fom had nowhere to stay for a few days. So it was a blessing we met him because he stayed with, with, us, with us a couple of days. Damn. So it's more on him that it was a blessing. Yeah. Right? And then obviously I don't know. There's a, then he got. Then he. he you know, there's some kind of. Dis, I don't know. He, then he was. He was out and about by himself again. And then that's where. He, that's where he lost all his. Um, his. Uh, um, his photos. Because there's a story, he sees his photo books from way back, all the trains from way right. back in the days. He lost it in New York. No he way. Fell asleep on the, he fell asleep on the subway. And someone Mayor took Jack. it. Yeah, someone took it here. Yeah. So he lost all, his, all the old trains, all the old, all his history from way back he lost. Damn. You know what I mean? So that's where he met from in New York. But, but imagine, wow. he's over there bombing New York. I'm, 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 I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. He's bombing New York subway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. His name was Cold Crush Dukes. Everywhere, every platform, I said, Jesus Christ. Going in ham. And we went to New York to retire from graffiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was just after we'd done the Earth's Edge. So we're going to go on vacation now and start a whole new conquest, which is to do the music. Wow. So we, we, we actually didn't go to New York for graffiti. We went to New York for vacation. Hold on. So, because Earth's Edge, for those that you don't know, <laughs> As you don't know, <laughs> which I'm sure you all do, is a seminal moment in well, Trillic, the yeah. basic Trillic Tower in, uh, in yeah. uh, West London. Um, momentous uh, achievement. Um, you were 14 and you were retiring from Graf. Yes. So how long were you doing Graf before you were 14? So I was doing, we was doing Graf from 81, 82. Yeah, so it was like a four or five year spell. Like my first year in a secondary school, 
I met Rage and Foam. Mm. So we went to the same school. Right. So they were doing graffiti before me. Okay. Right. I got introduced it by Foam and Rage. Ah. There was another person that um, did graffiti <clears throat> with them called Brendan, but we, we, we he went to Grove one day. Um, he, got, he got robbed and he never looked back. He just turned. He just switched off the graffiti. So then I I replaced Brendan's. Where he left off, I took over. Really? And I, know I got into graffiti, you know what I mean? Really? And that was like uh, the first, is that, is that, uh, late 81, early 82. Yeah, it was them, it was that, them times there. It was, yeah. yeah, just as we, we started school. So, yeah, I said I had a, it was about four or five years I was doing graph for. Then we retired because after yeah. I was Edge, we batted everyone. Yeah, yeah. There was no more, con there was no more, the only person we wanted, only person we wanted was Angels, but they were in France. Yeah. So, and they were like, they, them time they are just doing art galleries. Like, they wasn't even really street artists. You right, know what I mean? right, so, right. So there's, there's no more competition. So we lost enthusiasm. It's turned our um, energy into the music. You know Keep all the comments coming below, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what you say? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, as we say, we, we, <laughs> comments, we battered everyone. <laughs> battered. Um, the, this era you talk of, I mean, uh, rich rage and foam. These synonymous names that that you know extends their uh, <clears throat> um, extracurricular from, from graffiti and and mm. actually all the things that go on uh, outside that, that that almost breed a certain lifestyle that I don't think for for what the eighties was uh, couldn't be replicated really. Man, could. listen, listen, for those they need to listen, man. They need to make, if, they, if there's any filmmakers out there, if you can go back and make a movie about the eighties. Mm. In the UK, I mean, the eighties in America was phenomenal. I was happy. This, the stuff I saw in New York, mm. I was just blessed. Mm. I mean, I saw Tyson with his busted um, plaster car when he broke up the brain in the car park. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm fourteen in Studio Fifty Four, Studio Club, Studio Fifty Four. That's the spot where all the hookers are, the yeah. all the all the chicks. And that's where I first realized, shit, man, I love the Latino chicks. Really, that's when my love comes in. Listen, I never looked back. From that New York, I knew I liked Latino chicks. Really? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, just, I'm only a kid. Remember, Studio 54. Mm -hmm. I'm only a kid. I'm, remember, how, people say, how are you getting there? Them things, there was, we just said, we're from the UK. Just let us straight in. Mm -hmm. And there was, I saw, when you see like people talk about history, about chain snatching, mm -hmm. yeah? I saw that live in the club. Really? It was a, that was chain snatching, it was every five minutes, man. Yeah, yeah. There were people getting the chains, big rope chains ripped. I mean, you saw bouncers that were like built like. I ain't seen bouncers in my life mm. the way these dudes were. <laughs> these were houses, man. When they walk through the club, they part the the ravers like the Red Sea. Yeah, 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 yeah That's how they part the rave. Walk through. I, mean, I see everyone getting robbed. The chains getting robbed. Big fucking rope chains getting robbed yeah. in the club. I mean, it was like I saw about seven robberies a night really? in the club. That's mad. It was like chaos. I mean, I saw the I saw the the raggedness of New York. I mean, I, 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 remember, I remember I saw a documentary, uh, and I saw Method Man, and he was talking about the days of 42nd Street. Hmm. And when he said the days of 42nd Street, flashbacks came back. He goes, have you ever been to a movie cinema in 42nd Street? You walk into the cinema, the floor is like... That was a district which was all about theatres and yeah, cinemas. All, it, was about, it, was all, it was red light yeah. district, it was all hookers and holes. All of that. Cold, I saw Kojak cars, pimps outside. Yeah. I saw yeah, the whole yeah. image, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? But the cinema. Yeah. I've, never been, I've never been to a cinema experience in my life. Yeah. Like this, you walk in the cinema, it's 24 hours, remember, yeah? So yeah. The, all the crackheads and drug dealers were serving drugs in the cinema, smoking drugs in the cinema, doing whatever in the cinema. It was getting done there. It was no, there was no rules. The cinema, the floor was squidgy. You're walking over cockroaches. Oh, <laughs> shit. They were throwing Coca-Cola. I, mean, I, I was watching um, Freddy in, 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 on the screen. What? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. No way. Right. And no. I remember, yeah, yeah, Freddie Krueger. Um, From one the, nightmare the, to another. Yeah, yeah, watching it, yeah. <laughs> and the New York Cats were flashing drinks at the cinema screen. Coca-Cola dropping down the screen. It was, let's say, chaotic in the cinema, man. That would unhinge me, man. I'm, I mean, I, I'm like, obviously, I feel safe. I'm with, I'm with the older lot. Yeah. I'm like, this is a different world here, man. Yeah. Different world. I mean, they're fighting drinks at the cinema screen. When, when you know when Freddie come out, they're all getting, oh, yeah. When, when they got beat up, they, they're getting mad. I mean, it was, it was I saw... When I see people talk about New York, I saw it for first hand as a uh, kid. So, you know, and the youth, I mean, the 80s, you, you'll never, and over, over, even here, the 80s in London was a different ball game, man. Yeah, yeah. Different. I remember the Met Line. The Met Line, they used to have a graffiti squad. And we'd be all hanging in Grove. There's like a, when you go, when you go over the walkway bridge, mm. and you know, I don't know if where they, they've got a skate park there now. Yeah, where they're skating. Right, yeah. 
So all the writers would um, hang around there. Mm. You had Demo, Hate, Heaven Foam, Rio, um, Gunja. Every writer from the, that era would go to that spot and we all hang up. It's like a, a meeting ground. You go there, right. meet up, and you know, you go. It was I, derelict, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like yeah, a derelict. Yeah, it was yeah. like a derelict. It's like a derelict. You go there, and you see, you don't know who you're going to see there. You're going to see some graffiti writers meet up. So we'd be there, and they're, they're chilling on a regular basis. You'll see trains go by, and the Fred's photographing, ch -ch -ch -ch, flashes. Ch -ch -ch. Really? Yeah, flashing nonstop. It, it was crazy, man. It was a different ball game. You see, the, the Fred's were on the, on the trains, flashing, taking photographs nonstop. Wow. Yeah. Non stop. Didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, they're there. They're, they're, they're the Drake Graffiti squad. Come on, we're battering that line hard, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're battering it. Foam battered. Listen, <laughs> I got to make Listen, if you, if, if, for those who don't know foam, you got a foam, prepare to run. <laughs> There's, there's, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no diplomacy in what he does. He says, I'm doing it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like if you go wrecking, Raisin. Like if we go wrecking, we go to a store in the Holloway Road. Like I have a certain way of wrecking. I want to be wrecking it with discreet, but I can walk out calmly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not foam. Really? You go in the store for, hey guy, rap now guy. That's how he talks. Hey guy. He means just take the cans, don't give a fuck. Put the cans in your bag and run. This is his style. So when you go to foam, it's like, oh shit, we might get nicked today. That was the, he, he, he's back in the day, he's funny as fuck, man. How he often was, do, you, do you, I mean, I'm pretty I was every, I was every day. Like, when foam was in my school, we rolled every day. What, like, you, how many times a week did you get nicked? No, I didn't, I didn't, no, no, I didn't get nicked. We got away. We were running. Wow. I, I mean, it, it, fortunate, yeah. Some, I mean, <laughs> not people did get nicked again at Rackham and Foam. Yeah. But he he was like a bogart. He, like, he, really? he, like, he didn't have no tact. He just rack and go. And I remember he said, hey, guy, now. And, he was, and he, he's racking, so now you got to start, you got to do it anyway. Because you're going to get... <laughs> Because if you don't get nothing, you're gonna get nicked for getting nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so you know, going, going at phone was, was mad jokes, man. Getting at phone, even bombing the trains, like you, the trains would be rammed, rush hour. You got this is how cheeky he was. You'd be in a metropolitan line, ram jam like a sardine can in a um, yeah. metropolitan line. You're you're just a a, a day to day worker, yeah. a citizen on the train going home. Yeah. He would say, "Excuse me, please, move you out of the way." Really? <laughs> Pull his pen out. Phone. <laughs> People on the train say, "Oh, your phone." Really. Yeah. No variety. But weren't there any superheroes that had something to say? Oh, he, 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 Fron was just battered him. Like, hey, Fron was... Listen, you got to be prepared to run. Really? Like, there's... I like things doing, doing things and getting away with it. He'll do yeah. things you have to run. So, yeah. so fights will break out. Yeah, yeah, man. All Fome, man. Hey, not enough time from Because this is all folklore, by the way. You know, Fome, still... the story you hear about Fome, yeah, that's... It's the truth. Yeah, this is, yeah. I, I, I know me and Fome go way back. And he was like, he didn't give a damn, man. Yeah. He was just—he just said no tactics, just raggle. Tell me the craziest thing that's happened um, in the in the in the company of Rage and Foam and yourself. Well, tell me, and it may not ha necessarily be you three that instigated it or something happened. But what's the craziest thing that you could say? Wow, that that was that was neither life nor death, or it was a, a moment of wow. Well, I don't know, like, we just had times where it's to run. I remember, I remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember it was, um, CJ, was it CJ Graphics, <coughs> CJ Graphics in Victoria. Mm. So we, one day was when the one day we was racking. So we, um, so we used to have like rap days when, mm. and cause it's so right, right. So we have certain days where the graffiti artists would meet up. And it's not really racking day; it's like Bogart day. Mm -hmm. Cause if there's, if there's eight or nine of us walking to the store, there's no discreet, is there? There's always been discreet. No. Eight, we're taking and going. Yeah, yeah. So we started off somewhere. Started at Edge of Road, and uh, God bless Cat. Yeah. He's a, the right called Cat. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, <laughs> so first we started at Edge of Road, went to the DIY store, and they used to have the hammerheads. We all went in the store, did the Bogart thing. Cat got caught. Uh, he was the last one at the store. Uh -huh. He got caught. Because remember, it's like, it's like luck or draw. You're going to, you know what I mean? You're going to yeah, get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he got caught early in the day. So now the day's continuing. Well, now we're, we're in CJ Graphics. And I remember, never forget, <laughs> this is Victoria. We're all in there now. Um, and Fom just did the mad thing. Hey, guy, now. Or something like, when they started taking the can, the bun, this is Bunlex. All taking the bunts, all me, hate. The, I think, I think, I know hate was there. Rage, me, I think Insane was there. I can't because there's a lot of us. There's a, there a lot of us there. Mm. I remember, I just remember the, the store man wasn't having it. You know what I mean? And it, it, all, it all went chaotic, chaotic in the store and it all, you know, everything's falling down. Oh. We had to run. Everyone in the cans had to run in Victoria. I don't know who got caught that day, but some, you know what I mean? A few people got caught that day. And that's because of phones doing the mad thing, just not waiting. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, it's a fun, yeah, phone was a, he was a character boy. Yeah. Definitely, like, there's no discreet with phone. Just prepare to do it regular. There's no discretion. 
He is as raw yeah. as it comes. Yeah, it's funny how, well, I say funny, it's kind of by default when you're doing something of a criminal nature. Uh, all bets are off, innit? It's like, well, to whatever. And some people just have more aggression, something in them that just like, no, no, we're doing this. Yeah, he's like, there's, there's no there's no discreet, it's just regular. Yeah. Like, 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 even when we go in bombing, you're thinking, I don't really want to go bombing with a phone. Cause, <laughs> we, he's bombing in a full carriage. Yeah, yeah. We don't know who's in the carriage, it could be undercover feds. That's it, you know what I mean? So yeah, he, he, he was he was crazy. Yeah, he was definitely a definitely a character in the graffiti mm. scene. And the rumors there how he was, that's how he was. And I mean, really? I mean, obviously I grew up with him. So there's the, how he was with other people wasn't that way with me. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, but to the people who didn't know him, yeah, I remember graffiti guys coming down to the Hall of Fame, you know, the bridge robbing the people for the cameras and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a, that was a real thing. Wasn't wasn't it? Real, yeah, you came to the Hall of Fame from the outsider. Huh? Yeah, you had the thieves waiting there, man. Yeah, there was neighborhood crooks that just. All they done is rob people in the Hall of Fame. Right. So, who, so who are the biggest gangs that would? Do, do, oh, oh, let me oh, talk, let's, let's think pit, pit times where there's one pit, way pit in, one time. way out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the guy called Tipper and Bells. Really. People know their name really? from Grove back in the day. They were just. They used to love the graffiti eyes. They used to come. They used to wait, sit outside the Hall of Fame, wait for people to go in the Hall of Fame. It's only one way in, one way out. What's the honey trap? They shut the gate in there. Take the camera. Really. Yeah. Take everything. They, they, they got enough people has gone down to the Hall of Fame and got robbed. Really? Yeah, enough, 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 enough. Gatekeeping almost, like, you know, you've got to be of a certain standard from a certain area with a certain... Yeah, they, they, because they're, they're from Grove, that's their area. Yeah. So they looked at it, it's like, any from the outsiders, even people that think of free, they, yeah. there was no, there was no, uh, there was, there were, if they want to turn on you that day, they will. Mm. There's, 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 they, they were the neighborhood robbers. Yeah. yeah they were like, it's like, oh, Omar's coming, that's them, man, boy. Yeah, yeah. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't care about Graf. They no. just, they were just like... Yeah, yeah. cameras, trainers, where you got... I mean, what's in your bag? It's gone. But you never had a problem because you. No, no, from then, from then. I said my first, my first introduction to going to Labatt Grove. I told you there's a there was, um, four of us here, yeah? one guy called Brendan. Now, we went to Grove. This is like this is like the it's like it's my first time, going to Grove. Mm. And I remember, I remember was, yeah, there was a Futura piece that that Futura had done. Mm. It was there for a while, so we went to the back of that to look at that, and in that. Where people know about the future piece, there's like a little, it's like you go in and you're kind of, you're stuck, you can't get out. Mm, yeah. Okay. So we'd go in there and all the Grove boys would be outside. Right. Yeah. So obviously I know the faces, but I stood my ground. So I mean, I just get quiet. But my friend Brendan ran, so he chased him. He never did graffiti again. Really? And he would have been a bad boy graffiti artist. He was, he, I remember at that stage there, I was, I was the shittest. I just started graffiti. They remember doing it before me. He was bad, but he never he stopped doing graffiti from that day. So shout out to Brendan. I mean, was it Brendan Roach? I think his name Brendan Green. Brendan Green. Yeah, Brendan. That's... Yeah, yeah. He's the original, yeah, original NGA nasty graffiti artist. That was our crew name. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. More intel than than, mm. than this podcast deserves. Um, the man. You imagine all the kind of writers that probably didn't even do a season yeah. for those sorts of reasons. That's crazy, man. Man, I mean, the back... Grove was wicked, man. Grove, Grove, back in the days was good. I remember mm. a few tours there. He, he put his light, landmark. He had Enigma, yeah. which is one up. He's a bad boy, Kavita. Scam, scam, Casby. scam. So I met Casby later on. Casby, you had Chase. Yeah. Chase is one of the original. There you go. For Chase. those who don't know, Chase. Bad man, Chase. Come on. He's still looking well. I see him. He's looking well still. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's trying to corner. Yeah, he's, he's looking been on well. Ortega Sports. All yeah, that. I, I see. I said, you know, I remember you. Yeah. He goes, yeah, I remember you as a kid look growing up, seeing you doing your team. I mean, like, yeah, see skateboard them, yeah. and all everything. Yeah, he's still looking well. Yeah, Chase, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, that's a good that's a good time, man. Yeah, all I know is remember Chase, Scam, 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 Chase, oh, was a, uh, one up was Enigma. Uh, these are the guys that I'm, uh, I saw all the time. I obviously got non stopping up, but guys from Grove. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were like the Grove artists that I, I, I really recognised. I saw because they had early pieces. Mm -hmm. They had pieces, they had pieces like a year before I even went to Grove. Like, mm -hmm. I said, how long was that been there? I mean, and I always remember, when I think of Grove, I think of Car Plan. <laughs> <laughs> car Plan! You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but um, definitely good times there, man. I mean, I mean like, and at wintertime, we didn't really sort of go. It's the summertime when it's like, it was, it was really like nice yeah. there, man. It Rush, R.I.P. Rush. Yeah, R.I.P. Rush was a, Rush was a bandolero. He robbed all the graffiti artists. Really? Let me tell you about, let me give you a story about Rush. <laughs> Yo, R.I.P. Rush. I'm going to give you the story, right? This is how Rush was. So one day we're all going to. He, he, he was a bully, so he'd bully at foam, he'd bully at all of us. Really? Yeah, he'd bully. He's a, he's a couple of kidnappers put in his house. 
Like, he was a bully. He, he, was, he, was, he was like, you know that guy in Juice, Tupac? Yeah. He was like him. Really? Oh, shit, there's Rush. Yeah, yeah, he's always causing trouble. He's a big bully. I mean, he's not much bigger than us. He's a bully. I mean, we're like 11, 12. He's a teenager, 15, 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'd be, he'd be bullying us regular. I mean, so uh, I go uh, R.I.P. Rush. We're all in um, Gloucester, Gloucester Yard. Man. I'm fucking uh, pissed. Mm. So I remember I had a, cry, I had a Krylon hand, a Krylon hand that uh, my nan got me from the Portobello Market. Got me a Krylon paint. Right. And I thought, I had it for a year. I know, yeah, I had it for about six months. And I'm never going to use this. And I'm obviously going to the yard now. I got told Krylon don't come off. So we're in the yard, mad bombing the yard, bombing it up. Rush is crushing out our ICH and putting new SCH. Well, I'm in the yard, but I can't do nothing about it. I'm doing my R, he's, just, he's putting his name beside my name. This is how Rush was. Fucking bully. Oh, wow. It's me, I remember it's me, phone, time, um, insane. I, found, I think it was there. I think Hate was there. Yeah. A few other people. So now I'll give you a fast forward now. We did it, um, them time, Buntlax was the, the yeah, Rolls Royce. It was the Bentley of paint. <laughs> the Bentley of paint. So to get, and we used to see like Chrome Major painting with paint. We said, man, they're lucky they got, the, they got them crisp colours, man. Yeah. We had car plan, dupe colour. Yeah. yeah. The runny, the more runny. Yeah, we had, we had the car, car plan and Dupla was the main paint, you know what mm. I mean? Before Hammer Wright and all that coming up. So we burgled CJ Graphics three weekends in a row. Brutal. In a row. Wow. Every weekend. I, mean, I, remember, I, remember, I remember the first time we went. I remember there. I was a kid, that thing unlocked by the time. Yeah, because yeah, they had, a, they had a, some guy, one of us had, one of the guys had the, had the, had the inside information about there's no alarm. And there was a nightclub downstairs, which we know is called Samantha's Nightclub. And I remember we was, went, up, went upstairs, and I, I know you, I remember, he goes, we have, to, we have to, now there's two buildings with the alley in the middle, yeah? Mm -hmm. We have to basically climb over, or put your foot over to the window, over the alleyway. Yeah. Hopefully we don't fall downstairs, down to the alley. <laughs> Getting into CJ Graphics. And I remember as a kid, I never forget this, like, you know, you're, if you do a burglar, if, like, to yeah. do a burglar, you know, we remember getting in the, the store, <coughs> dark in the store, we had a little torch, like, mm. there's, and it's looking at the buns like it's gold. Yeah. Like oh. it's gold, like the bun is gold. <laughs> we, so we give some jokes. So we have, we, we, this is how we, imagine how we robbed this thing. We're in there, all of us has taken every bun, like, we cleaned it. So listen, we cleaned it. We, like, we emptied every bun. We had about four or five CJ big graphic wow. bags, with buns each. Now imagine this. We robbed the store, it's about midnight, about two o'clock, two o'clock, about, about one, about, I remember, no, no, about two, two a.m. Maybe, maybe even, yeah, about two a.m. we robbed the, robbed the store, put all the butt legs in the bags, walked all the bags into like a, uh, like a little green park yeah. that's local to the to CJ Graphics, one o'clock, you know, a little park where people sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've gone back there six in the morning, yeah, all right? We had to go, all picked all the CJ, CJ Graphic bags, on the bus, all of us with like four bags each on the bus, <laughs> going to my house, yeah? Store, we store the paint. I remember, I remember we put the paint on top of the roof. The whole roof was covered, like it was like, it was like a carpet of bun -like. Wow. And we did this three weekends in a row, in a row. So, now, no one had bunts them days. Yeah. Only like Chrome Angel, only, only Chrome Angel had bunts. Like, or, or people who did commissions. Common graffiti artists didn't have bunts, no, yeah? no, no, right? No. So I stored all my bunts in my lockup. Yeah. I don't know who told Rush where my lockup was. What? Yeah. My lockup, all my bunts were taken. Next minute you see Rush throw ups in cobalt blue. Um for for Western Orange. Uh you know all the bunt colours, uh, rose pink. Fuming. What can I say? Yeah. He stole all my bunts. He couldn't rush everywhere. Like, I was fuming all my... Like, three weeks of robbing fucking um, Buntleck. And he jacked it all. Yeah. Because they, they, I was... In them, in, the, in them times there, graffiti times, I was always... No, remember, I wanted, I wanted the writers that never outlined in black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at my pieces, I never outlined in black. I mean, rare. I think I, I did one at Earth's Edge. <laughs> I like the top piece. Yeah, yeah. But I never outlined in black. Never. Wow. I was always one of the guys. I used to outline in Buntleck. And no one could outline the bunt because it come out too fast, but I could control it. Yeah, yeah. So all my pe all my pieces were outlined in bunt like. Wow. Like I had so much See, bunt. there's some intel for you. Yeah. I'll, if you look at the Earth's Edge, if you look at the Earth's Edge, my piece down below, mm. you'll see it's two, I'm the first guy to do two different colour outlines on the same piece. Wow. And the only reason that happened, the bunt like ran out. No, no. <laughs> it's classic. <laughs> <laughs> if, you see, if you look at the Earth's Edge, look at the bottom piece, you'll see there's two tones, there's two colours. 
the, the red Bud Light, I think it's a burgundy, it ran out and I had to use another one. So I had, it's two different colour outlines on the on the piece down below. Crazy. So you, if you look at it next time, I'm the first guy to do that. To do, that, to, to that, 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 that thing's been in movies and everything. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. So, and I was just saying, I was just doing throw up some Bud Light. I had tons of Bud Light until it being rushed. I took on my buds, man. So that, that's, a, he, that's the kind of person he was. A, he was a bully. Neighbor, he was a neighborhood bully. Mm-hmm. And, to, and so he got, and, uh, but he didn't bully up. I remember, I remember um, um, Bunny Subway, on the man, the man put him in his place. So he only bullied us with the, with the youth, me, Rage. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, remember, I remember Fume. Is it Fume? Feud, Feud. Feud, yeah. I remember, I, I remember, I remember Foam tagged Feud's door. <laughs> what? I remember, I remember Feud, yeah. I remember Foam tagged Feud's door, a street door. Wow. Yeah, there was some, um, some kind of booth going on, so Foam actually tagged the door. I've you know never I mean? heard anything. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so that's how, you know, funny, man. So yeah, Foam was, a, foam was like a, Foam was a mini rush. Why did you, what, because you know, you're very much in the mix again, but why did you stop Graf? Ah, uh, because um, there was no competition. That was it. Uh-huh. We got bored. And who, after doing that piece there, there was no to, that battle piece put us that 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 gave us a kick in the ass. I said, yeah. "No, we're going to do. We're going to pull out yeah. pull out the burners in this one. We're yeah. going to go all out." Because yeah. we we was, we was like we were training in Ally Carpets for about that summer, piece and non-stop in Ally Carpets. Yeah. And then when we did the uh, edge, that was like a, a, a that was like a, a fuel injection to, to do the best. Yeah. And after that, there was, there was no more, there's nothing to give us that kick. I, mean, we, mm-hmm. I would have loved to do that, that wall again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so there was no one to give us the, 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 the push to do it again. Or the incentive. Because if you notice, we stop, if you notice, the uh, it stops. We, 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 it goes on to the right, and there's a, mm. uh, I think it's a tank. Yeah. When I, when I do the kingdom piece, yeah? All right. We should be to finish the background. Because we, got, we already know, we batted them. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we heard they come down, so there's no, they've already like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've already seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, there's, there's no competition. So, once we heard we, were, we we already won, we didn't even go back and finish what we what we started. Really? So we didn't finish we didn't finish the Earth's Edge because the fuse the fuse has was gone because we didn't know we won. So you understand? So it was, yeah. it was really it took us out of it. We had we had no energy to go again to do to do it again. We had no had no energy to finish the piece. Once we know we beat them, and was, you know, they came down, we saw the bears tags on the floor, and we heard they saw it. So yeah, it's, the man some bears from south. I think it was siege or something like that. Because it's supposed to be a quiet. No one's supposed to know about the wall. And I think Kane. G'd up, G'd up, told Siege, come look at the wall. He came, so Kane kind of baited it up. He, he told, okay. Siege, told Siege, come look at the wall. Siege saw it. And then we put, we put it back to base and listen, mate. Uh, it's, mm. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no-go, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then after that, we just, we just said, oh, I put the cans down, threw my cans away, and that's it. It's mad. I mean, your creative uh, output is... I mean, talk about being ahead of the curve with uh, with um, the whole Black Ops and the, that sub-low genre. Yeah. Um, in fact, it wasn't even a... Was no, it? No, no, no. I tell you, that come around. Because after the after the Earth's Edge, we go into hip-hop. Yeah. So uh, we, we was doing hip-hop times, all the hip-hop kind of thing. It's like ni- early 90s. And I was in a rap called Construction, which me, Rage, and State of Art. But in the rap era then, there was only one guy controlling... And I remember, we used to sit down and talk about this. It's one guy that's controlling the whole UK rap industry. Tim Westwood. Uh-huh, that's it. I said, this, nah, this punk, you know, it's Brez, we're making tunes for him to play it once on the radio. Yeah. So this Brez, not do, he's not doing nothing for the UK, just pounding Americans away, he might get one little play, but he don't do nothing for the UK. Nothing, yeah. he didn't do nothing for the UK. So, me seeing this, me seeing this through my early hip-hop career, um, I said, no, F this, man, I'm not making any more music for, for, one, for one DJ. Yeah. To my, he controls the whole scene, he's the gatekeeper. Yeah. So, you know, this is like early, uh, late 90s now. I started going to garage raves. Um, I said, wow, because at them time, all the hip hop raves, all hard b-boys, there's no chicks in the dance, there's yeah, pure man yeah, with hoodies yeah. on, no girls, you know what yeah. I mean? I went to a garage rave in the late 90s, I'm playing pure chicks. <laughs> so this is where all the girls are going. <laughs> all right, cool, got into the garage thing. I thought, this, bit, this music's soft, man. Yeah, it's soft, it's yeah. music's soft. I'm a hard ultra man. By comparison. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, a, I'm a hard hip hop man. Yeah. So this music was too soft for me. But then I heard one tune in the dance, um, I think it's life, life is what you make it. That's what it was, yeah. I'm, I'm in the tune. At them time, then, my friend gave me an E. I never took drugs in my life, never smoked, no, didn't even drink. Uh-huh. Gave me an E. And this tune sounded too dirty in the dance. <laughs> Beeline. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a music head, go look for the record, Life is what you make it. Well, all right, there you go. There's, man, some, inter- there's some homework. Man, the tune is off the chain. It's a fucking classic. It's LB and my, and my cousin's group Chronicles, which I didn't even know until recently. Really? Yeah. Basically, yeah. More serendipity going on yeah, here. Yeah, so that tune, so I thought, when I heard that tune, I thought, hmm, am I confused? That 
what I'm getting from this song, if I can fuse that with my hip hop beats, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna create my own genre, sub low. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I get the rave bass line mm -hmm. with the hip hop beats. Mm -hmm. That's how sub low come. Mm -hmm. Now when I was making sub low, um, I remember I was in, I was in, a, I remember I come with the idea when I was in Florida. I was going, so I was going to America a lot. I was always traveling as a kid. Since since '88, I was traveling to New York. Yeah, yeah, nonstop. And I stopped going to New York. I started going to Florida. So I went to Florida, and I, I said, "This is a whole different culture here. Like, I mean, yeah. it's different music. Yeah. It was like Miami bass, but it was this is like whole different this, America. This is, this is pre. Yeah, this is like before you knew about before the man never knew about Master P. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. years before. This is the thing. Yeah, I remember they, I, they moved differently. Yeah. Down so there. before even Master P was even known in New York, mm. I'm going to Florida. I knew about this, this dude. Yeah, I said, this hip hop's different. Mm. They, 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 they didn't play in New York, didn't play in England, didn't play nowhere, mm. only in the South. So I'm going South, I'm, I'm actually listening to this music, so I'm thinking, oh shit, I like this shit. It's the hip hop, kind of, the hip, it's a different hip hop, so I fused that yeah. Master P stuff yeah. with the garage bass line. Yeah. And I said to my mom, I was on holiday with Son of Noise, I said to my mom, I'm make my own sound. And he always says it, man, you owe me 50%, because I said, we're going to do it together. I said, I'm going to create my own sound, sub low. So I'm gonna create it, I'm gonna create it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the garage network, because I respected the garage network because they didn't rely on one DJ. Yeah, yeah, they had their yeah, own yeah. DJs. Yeah. There wasn't a the one DJ they control. Just moved differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had their own had they had their own network, it was UK. Mm. They wasn't relying on Tim Westwood, they had their mm. own DJs, and it was like, you know, they had it controlled, and it was, you know, it was like a cult. And they, so I thought I'm gonna use that network mm. to push my sound. Mm. I'm not gonna need Tim Westwood. Mm. I'm gonna use the that's garage. What it's all about. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I fused that's how Sublow was Sublow was created. And when I was making that, obviously the garage heads didn't like me. They said, oh, man, you're too dark, man. You're just too dark, blah, blah, blah. But I knew this is the gen this is the new generation coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. going to be the UK hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. ran rapping on it, blah, blah, blah. I saw the vision. So when did, when did Black Ops, uh, when did that establish itself? Let's get a date on right, that. Right, right. So, I, uh, so like uh, early, early 99, 98, I had the idea. Yeah. 99. I, I did the, uh, well, yeah, so 99 put the first record out. Yeah. The first, let me, let me say this now. Forget about what you hear before, blah, blah, blah. The first ever grime record with all the elements of grime, dirty bass line, a rave bass line, rave energy, and not emceeing, rapping. Because uh -huh. men them times, all the garage MCs were emceeing. Yeah, yeah. were eight bar hooks. Yeah. I was rapping. You were rapping? Yeah. We go, we go and get a tune. Go and get yeah. Right? Rapping. On these, these rhythms, no one knew what the hell it was. I as released, because, released yeah, as yeah, it. releasing. It is. And what it was, because I was in Florida, yeah. the Master P thing, yeah. that's why I fused it. Yeah, got yeah. So people couldn't even understand because they never heard of Master P. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I knew I'm fusing that with the garage and getting my own genre, yeah. sub you know what I mean? Which had the, had all the three elements dirty beats, rapping, and rave. That's what makes it, that's what makes it grime music, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Because right? people say, what is, what is grime? Grime music ain't about a tune. Grime music is about beat. It's the, ele the whole elements. We didn't call it grime. The media called it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. And I, I was the first guy to come with a genre. This is not garage. This is this. Did you have people hitting you up? When... Well, man, I had people hating me, man, not letting me through the gate. No, but what about... what? So, uh, okay. That, no, I'm talking like people that... No, notable people that would hit you up and say, yo, you got any beats? Yeah, so it happened. Yeah, so when I put when I put Drop Top Bimmer out, I remember I, when I heard Easy bust it on the radio, I knew I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy was the, the gatekeeper of the mm -hmm, garage mm -hmm, circuit. Mm -hmm. Even he played it. Yeah, big up Easy. Right, so big up Easy, yeah. Legend. Uh, Wesley J used to bust it in Coliseum mm. regular. I did him a dub plate. He, he's busting it regular in Coliseum. You hear the late Charlie Brown, I got him in the CD saying, this is a new type of sound. What sound is this? Whoa. I got that. that he, he, he's at like the top garage MC at the time. He's saying, whatever this is, this is new. I got that. Yeah. This is all documented. And I was the first guy. People can go and say whatever. No, go back to your timeline. No one distinctively made their music and, and put it in a, a different category. I said, this is not garage. This is sublow. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, had, I, I just have a little pamphlet. Some of the old school records, there's a pamphlet in some of the releases explaining what sublow is. Really? I'll, I'll show you. I've got Yo, one at home. Okay. I, 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 and you're reading it and you're like, this guy's thinking way out of the box. Yeah. So I was, I was the first guy to say, this ain't garage. This is sublow, and I knew this is. I knew this is. This was where all the bedroom DJs. Remember, all the, I knew all the bedroom DJs are not going to be the bedroom DJs forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're going to be the next generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew feed them. Yeah. And I knew I'm from the hip hop era. The young kids are in the hip hop. Yeah. So I knew they're going to be loving what I'm doing. Did you have a? Did you have a? Um, because to call a genre sublow, obviously later, grime. Um, 
obviously Grum became more of a commercial commercial thing so yeah. you, where that ever that came from but um uh I saw this interview with uh Pharrell about the Neptune sound and uh one of the things that Teddy Riley created New Jack Swing said yeah. to him was like you should have called it a right. name a name and it's there forever ever. Which, which I did yeah because you created you created your star means you're there you're in the history books forever mm. Ever. Mm. And I would say, I said, it's a sub-low sound. It's not a beat, it's a sound. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I knew, remember, I'm, I'm a hip-hop man, so I was well intelligent about music. Mm. So these guys first coming to the Gary scene, probably the first time around in the music industry, I was already, already in the hip-hop industry, so I already mm. knew, right, well, you've got to be different. Yeah. And the and, cycles and yeah, how that yeah, how yeah. it moves over the yeah, yeah. generations and years. And, and, I, and I knew, what, why, did I learn, why did I like certain hip-hop artists? Because they were different. Mm. Like I, I was a big fan of Ultimate Nick. Mm. I like their stuff. I said, so I said, when I do mine, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. So I created, that's why I said I'm going to create it from day one. I'm not going to come in and be blending to their, be blending to their music. So I'm doing something different. Uh -huh. I was stating that from day one, from the get go. Mm -hmm. This is sublo. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a whole different thing. And look what, look what it turned into. So I'm the bridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. To what became. I believe yeah, so. Became, yeah, yeah. I, I see all in Graham Henry. Good luck, big, big up all the Graham guys. But they don't, they always get the history wrong. 2002. Bull BS, man. Well, you know your history. None of them man there can talk to me about Grime, who's the first. I'm the first mother ever did that shit. I'm doing shoot, I'm doing shoes like hoes don't mean shit. They didn't even know about hoes. Well, you went to America. Yeah, so, so I, I was, was so that was I'm, I'm fusing, yeah, so I'm fusing the hip hop. You hear all my dropped up with kid, mm. all my raps. And if you listen, if you listen to that record, dropped up with kid, listen to the bars. There's no, no joke bars. There's no jokes in the bars. And when did that come out? That's 99. It's okay. So you can go back and it's all online. Yeah, yeah, can... no online. Yeah, there was dark garage and stuff. But I was not. No one doing rapping. The, 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 what they call gram now with the elements. Mm. I knew this is something different. I mean, and, and, and that's on record. I mean, I had the, had the tune way before then, but this mm. is on record. And then the first first Black Ops label tune, where the label was launched, mm. first release, your record collector. Look for the first Black Ops. Obviously, dropped up in the All about cash is white label. The first Black Ops release was holes don't mean shit. How can you, how can I, from the garage circuit, I'll give you a story. I went to the record <laughs> store, released the groove, right? This is how, I'm, I'm, I've always been like outrageous and raggo, mm -hmm. yeah? I didn't give a shit about rules. Imagine going to the garage store, give the, giving a woman who's in the store, she looked at my label, hoes don't mean shit. She looked at me like I said, I'll take it back. Really? Yeah, she said, like, you can't put this in here. I said, well, hoes don't mean shit to me. <laughs> Why not? And I said, well, you know what? You're going to be calling me later on to put it back. Yeah, yeah. And then the manager called me, yeah, bring the cash tune back. And by then, remember, I had, my, I had two white labels that were already flying out. And it's popping, yeah. Yeah, so the woman's like, you can't have this record here, hoes don't mean shit. I was doing way against the grind, against the, what you call it, the, what, was going on, what was going on in that scene in the temperature. I was doing something yeah. against everything. I was going against the establishment. I'm saying stuff that you can't say. I was emceeing stuff you couldn't emcee, you couldn't yeah. say. I'm the first street guy to talk about the street stuff. Go back, they know, man. You know what I mean? No one was doing what I'm doing because I was in the game, doing the game, being the game, living the game. Did they, do you think some of it is that there's kind of uh, polar kind of uh, lanes that were, you know, because East, you know, with Bo and um, the, the, the grime generation that came through. They, remember, they came through Slimzy. Right. right, Slimzy, big up Slimzy, the Godfather. Now, mm. none of them artists would ever be big without Slimzy. Slimzy was the first iTunes and Spotify of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. was the Spotify. He was the iTunes of that era. Wherever he played, whoever MCs on his set, his platform became big. Wow. So he was original Spotify and iTunes of that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, iTunes are way before Slimzy come on the scene. I mean, yeah, yeah. Right? they were doing Jungle and all that. So he introduced all the Grand MCs from. Um, East. Yeah. That's why they all blew up. Right. So he, 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 without him, none, all these MCs wouldn't be born. Mm. And you're him a boys. Yeah. You, you... I, I met Slimzy um, later on in a, in a music house. Ah. Um, but all them MCs, they didn't even show him no, they didn't even show him, it's funny, them prayers don't even show him much love now. And he, he gave birth to all them guys. Yeah. He gave birth to all them big MCs you see out there on his platform. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's sad to see sometimes. Even like, you know, how he built up Rince, you don't get the respect that he, he gets. I mean, without him, Rince wouldn't even running the way it was. You know I mean, but yeah, big up Slimzy. It's funny, uh, people, and I don't know really who's mainly at fault. I, 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 I just feel like there's some people that are just ahead of the curve. And sometimes they can be in it through the whole duration, but they just become 
I'm not, it sounds crass to say, but you know, part of the the community, part of the furniture, they become part of the yeah. um, and and it's. It's yeah, it's like, it's a bit like, it's about like Skrillex, you know what I mean? Like suddenly coming in with something yeah. way out. If, if, if you get the people backing you, from, you get the big, organ, you know, the big corporation backing you from behind, they get the like, you know how the music game is now, you've yeah. got people backing you, you're going to be in the forefront. You know what I mean, like, I, I always tell people, oh, Graham, I said, listen, go back, to your, go back to the heyday of Graham, it's 2003, 2004, who won all the awards? Fucking me. I won all the awards. Heard all the tunes and the dances? Fucking me. I had all the tunes. Who tunes would... Whenever you play a Black Ops song, it will smash the tune previously. Yo. Yo, I just love the Black Ops catalog, yeah, bro. When, it, when, it, when you hear Black Ops tune the dance, you know, you know what Black Ops means. That's it. It's taking out the next the tune that it's coming after. We, we, so I won all the awards. I won, I won, I won, listen, we did a, did a, did a, did a producers, uh, producers Clash record. It's like an all-star producers. Uh -huh. Who had the biggest tune there? Me. <laughs> <laughs> But I never, I never, I never ever brag about all that stuff. I won all the awards, UMA awards, and I know, I don't know that before post, before internet, I won all the awards. But this is the thing, isn't it? Before post, post into uh, pre-internet. <laughs> so, like you say, you you're not one to like overly confidently brag about it unless the, the 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 facts were there. At a time of no no internet, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. To, yeah, we had tape packs. So this is, how, this, is how I promoted my, this is even how I, I promoted myself. I'll go to all the raves. Yeah. They'll shout out Johnny Cash yeah. on the tape pack. You hear my name on the tape pack. And then next bit, I've got a tune coming out, Johnny Cash, Champagne Bubbler. Mm. That's how I pre-promote mm. myself. Yeah, nice. I had a strategy for everything. Everything, yeah. was, everything, was, everything was strategized what and I was the doing. The streets listened the whole time. Yeah, you know I mean, it was like tape packs were, tape packs were the SoundCloud of them times. Tape packs were your yeah. graffiti yeah, 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 tags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That, tape packs were... That was the info, that was the radio station, that was tape packs was your source of knowledge of what's going on. That's a golden era. I do love yes. that. You know I love that about drum and bass as well, jungle yeah, yeah. this time. You know what I mean? So that was, you know, they had a good time, man, driving around in my car, white labels in the back of the boot. I mean, I meet so many people now and say, I remember you, man. Driving your back. And I had that I had that that effort. That, I had that the I had that formula from the New York guys driving around with mm. their record boots. Mm. Yeah. So I so that I, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah like so you say, I, the, the Master P era. Yeah, so of, I was I was copying them. Yeah. Driving with my car yeah. full of white labels. Yeah. Give them the DJs. Don't worry. You're going to like it later on. Yeah. Might like it now, you're going to like it later on. Really, really? And they all said to me, yeah, they say, you know what? You're damn right. When I first got the record, I thought, what's this? And later on, it climatized to them. Um, mm. Right. Johnny, your, your business acumen uh, and foresight, and again, you know, some, like I said, you can almost be too early for this stuff, um, but your ear to the street and understanding of how kind of uh, maybe it's an element of common sense, just knowing how business works. Where does that come from? Well, that came from the... <laughs> just, yeah, just uh, common sense. But i tell you one thing where I messed up. Go on. That, that happened on the last podcast yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so... yeah, yeah, go ahead. One thing, when I, when I was doing the Black Ops label, I wish I took more set, more time with the business thing. Because I was doing music for the love of it. I wasn't doing it for the business. Mm. I was doing it for the love. And you were on a momentum, weren't you? Yeah, so I did yeah. I was I didn't take care of the business thing where I would be more established now or I would be more I'd be much further than where I am now. But I'm I have got a legendary status or part, but I didn't mm. care, take care of the business which I should have done. Mm. My effort, my work ethic is from the road. Mm. Anything Common sense, you do because I was on the road. Talk roads. to me about that work ethic from the road. Get, 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 let's dial in on that a bit. All Give right. me what, what define work ethic, street work ethic. Well, first, of all, we just uh, right. So, how I started when I say that lyric, when I started, I bought a half ounce. Yeah, it's true to the game. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, I, um, I saw everyone smoking weed, doing whatever around me. Mm. I didn't smoke weed. I got robbed one time, yeah, and they took my, took my Technics deck. Mm. I had one technique's deck. I took my technique's deck. Mm. I said, shit, man. I took my technique's deck. I thought, man, I've got no money now. I've got nothing. They were cleaning me out of my house. So I sold my technique's deck. I went to one of my local hustlers. that um, He was big in the game. I said, man, I ain't got a clue what to do here. So I said, I bought a half ounce of weed. He bagged it up for me. Mm -hmm. I had two customers. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, had two, wow. I had two customers. Because um, where I lived, I had, um, I had um, one of them kind of flats, ABC flats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I see all my friends going upstairs to, to my neighbour from a long time. Yeah. You know, it's like way prior to me even getting into the game. I'm like, why are you going up there? So one day I knocked my neighbour. I said, why are my friends come here? Oh, they give me weed. 
Oh, so I said, well, if I give you weed, you come to me? Of course I would, you're downstairs. So I bought the half ounce, my friend bagged it up. I mean, it was, it was 50 pound times for a half ounce. Bagged it to seven, to seven jaws. I sold it to him and the other two neighbors, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It took me a little while, it took me a little, took me a little yeah. while to get further rid of the first one. And my efforts were, I, had, I said, look, I was just determined, I'm not, I was, I have a goal and I set myself a goal. When I mm. get to this, I'm going to quit. Or when I get to this, I'm going to do this. So I, had, so I had a goal. So I had a half ounce, I kept getting rid of it, bought it. I, did, I, did, I stayed in the same Grammy clothes for time. I said, I'm not going to buy no clothes, I'm going to save every penny of this, this fucking thing I'm doing. Yeah. So everyone's, everyone's doing weed around me. So I'm just buying weed, selling weed. I said, no, what? I need to sell to these people. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I come into the market, see what's going on. So I need to be the person they're coming to. They're buying, yeah. I need to be the Sainsbury's for these guys. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was my goal. I got the weed, and I got then a friend. There's a guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but he introduced me to the game Tuna Q. He was the original guy who bought. To, he bought. He was very. A lot of him. Some one guy. He's famous. He's known in the area, but he taught me the way. Tuna Q. He, he get, it was a marketing game, but give you two ounces, give you a quarter free. Really. And in them days, no one was giving no one that for free. So he he told me the game. So I did. I bought the Tuna Q. I, I kept flipping, kept flipping, and now then I then I then I was getting then I was serving everyone around me. So Monopolised. Yeah, so I, I had that same formula with music. Yeah. So, so I want to be the person you're, you're coming to me to buy. Yeah. I want to be the supplier. And then, so it's a work if you, and if you've got, if, It's work efforts. You're going you're, you're to do something for a hobby. You're going to do something for fun. Or you're going to do something to get somewhere. Game. Game right here. Yeah. This is the only podcast that you need to hear about the game. Wow, that's sick. I mean, so, uh, you know, they were, they were good times, man. They were yeah. good times. Yeah, good good. Them times was, Jesus, well, I'm happy to be part of them times. <laughs> well, get, we, get away with murder back then. Yeah, but yeah. but at the same time, it, again, it's a, it can be reapplied to anything. Yeah. Any industry, as long as you've got a, a drive. You know, yeah. You need a drive, man. Yeah. You have to have a, you have to have a, a purpose. Like, like, see, now I've got my new label launching. Yeah. I've got a drive in it. So now I'm going back to square one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that drive is going to get me to, I know where the future's going with the new yeah. music. Yeah. So yeah. I've, got this, I've got the same drive. How I had with Black Ops with my new label. Well, we must talk about this. You know what I mean? You know, for any sort of sign off. So, Freedom is the new label. Yeah, Freedom Music. Freedom Music Records here is the, is the, my new label. So, I've still, Black Ops is still there. Yeah. So I've, got a, I've got a Black Ops. Later on in the year, I think it's later on in the year, it's a four vinyl. What? Johnny Cash Classic. Vinyl, four vinyl, Johnny Cash classic vinyl collectors. It's got me, uh, uh, me hanging off the Earth's edge. Got all graffiti pictures in there. What? It's gonna be a collectors. What? That's gonna be, that's gonna be coming out. The whole whole, whole type hype. Uh, what's it? What's it? Let me get the name. Who's who be doing? Let me get the name. That's mad. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be a classic. Yeah, it's just gonna be like this has got to be one of those moments. Yeah. So like you know, metalheads do those compilations. Yeah. This needs to be one of them. Yeah. Ones. It's a four vinyl. Yeah. Artwork. It's got me hanging off the Earth's edge wall. <laughs> all photographs from the 90s photographs all different kind of I mean all different bits and pieces in there I've got bigger who's it uh, Sneaker Social Club big up yeah big up Jamie like I'm not being funny but you know we do you know there's Goldie of your era but for for your genres you're the guy yeah. like you can't you can't this is, I'm, I'm making it public you cannot say Goldie and not say not say Johnny Cash in the same in the same conversation so far as pushing the envelope mm. of genres and music, right? Yeah, correct. No, I, 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 listen, when I do music, I say, I'm not copying no one. I'm going to do me. Yeah. And, and I, because I was on the roadside working, I didn't care about pressing up records. It wasn't an issue to me. I'm like, pressing up. I'm going to flood the market, man. Yeah. Just how you, how you do it in the, in the drug game. I'm going to flood the market. Mm. That's it. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to flood it. You go to a record store, you just see black ops. Two, to be honest, racks. to be honest, that was my whole deal with podcasting. Some people say, I "Don't really can't keep up." Or how many no. you done it? It's like, well, no, it's called flooding. You go, yeah, you got to keep going. It's called flood momentum. You got to keep. You got to keep. <laughs> just, listen, you got to keep it. Keep it going, man. Keep it going. So now I'm doing a freedom music thing. And for those that don't know, it's still got that sublomatic sound. Yeah. But I'm moving to because I'm. I never stopped making music. I stopped putting music out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you go on live and we see you bumping yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time. So I'm always making music. <laughs> yeah. Music is my. That's my. Uh, that's my, my that, that's my, without music, that's, that's, like, that's, my, that's like my girl. Yeah, music yeah. is my first girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without music, I mean, I'll be crippled, man. What do girls say when you say that? I, I've, got a, I've got a good girl. She lets you know, she lets me, well, she, a girl understands. She goes, she's sort of joke. When you coming home? I'll be in the home. I'm in yeah. my studio. She calls my, my studio, another house. Mm. So, I mean, so music is my first love. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
Now I've got the drive as well. And believe me. And a new genre, the freedom. New, yeah, yeah, new genre. Now, when I did the genre, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, I didn't, I didn't think it, I didn't look at it, I'm doing something new, but the people telling me, this is, yeah, you're doing this on uh, uh, a piano tempo, but you're not doing amateur piano, you're doing some kind of hybrid thing, your own thing. Yeah. Which is, because I can always make the amateur piano, I can, I can do what's going on, but I want to meet me. Yeah. I want to be the individual. There's so much music coming out in the world, I've got, I've got to make my music stand out. Yeah, yeah. So when you do listen to it, you think, oh, this, this sounds different. Anyone listens to it who's not heard it before, this sounds different. It's the first thing they say, it sounds different. So, you know, I've got, there's going to be, every month there's going to be a release, every single month. Every month? Every month, yeah. Yo, we're we back on a flooding I'm game. I'm back on, I'm, I'm, way ahead of, I'm way ahead of my releasing now, I've got so much music. And, then if, if, and if you're a new producer out there making greasy beats, uh, send to me, man. Send to Johnny Cash at theblackops.com. See these labels, see yeah. it's the label, so yeah. you, get, you get your bits yeah. over. Yeah, send them over, send them over. So, but there is a sound yeah. policy, there is a particular type oh, of... Just, just be... Nah, you just, just as long as it's good music, man. I say, I say, I say, I say I always look at something inventive. Oh, that that always gets my ear when something new. Because yeah, 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 yeah. if you're making something, that's, if you're making something, right, if you make something that's for today, right? Yeah. So look, if you, if you make something for today, it's only, it's only gonna last for today. Uh, uh. My Black Ops music is timeless. Uh, uh. I was way ahead of the game. I put a, if I put a Black Ops Black Ops tune from 2000, it sounds like I made it today. Authenticity, isn't it? Yeah. Have to be the music. Goes a long way. Will be, if your music will be timeless. Mm. And I will say, try and try and create your, try and create something unique in your what you're doing. Mm. So they say, oh, that's my man's beat. You can hear it. Say, that's, that's a Johnny Cash beat. Mm. You know. So I will say to producers, try and get something unique that you can they can establish that's you. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's in the record yeah. collection. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I'm doing that. Um, but yeah, the Black Ops are still tons of Black Ops stuff coming out. And um, that's that's going to be once the Johnny Cash classic album comes out. That's going to I got tons of Black Ops that mm. were released. Whoa, really? From I've made music since the era there, but not put out. Don't even, don't even, let, don't even let public ears hear it. Whoa, I've got tons of music. Tons of Prince. Yeah. I mean, I've got computers full. Of, I mean, really? I've got, I'm putting out stuff for my 3D music label now. That, that I was using my Power PC Mac. Really, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, tell me, so when you hear something, you're like, "Wow, well, I did that like eight years ago." Yeah. But it bangs now. That must yeah. be a real yeah, surprise. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, oh my god, sorry, sorry. You need to do part two sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like um so what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Oh uh, yeah, it's just the genres and having the fact that you've got a catalogue that you haven't released. Yeah, yet. yeah. So so the J J Johnny Cash thing is gonna springboard all my all the black ops stuff re, re and remember it's a whole new audience that doesn't even know yeah, about me. Yeah. So everything in mind from the past is sound brand new to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, because I've never been good at marketing. Fresh ears. I was good at marketing before, but I've never, good, never been good at digital marketing. Mm -hmm. When it was like roadside marketing and it was like everything hands on, yeah. I was master at that. Mm -hmm. around me, sorry, I'm going around meeting people, blah, blah. Yeah. But we're in a digital age where you've got to be very smart. You've got to have, yeah. you have to have a digital know-how and how to be social aware, how to market your music. Yeah, yeah. It's 90% marketing, 10% product. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, um, so I'm relaunching Black Ops after that album comes out. Mm. The freedom music thing is not, it's going to be ongoing. Mm. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuse it with my culture, the graffiti, everything together. That's the way to do it, man. Because yeah. then it becomes it, it's you personified in your, your yeah. creative. Act. I mean, like, my plan is to get my art. When I get all done, I'm gonna do the art gallery yeah. with, the, with the audio and the art. Ooh. It's gonna be all mixed up, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. So, and I got um, I, oh, I have to get you. Well, hopefully this summer I'm gonna start this summer. Art in the garden. Art in the garden. Yeah, it's a podcast where you nice. come down, you paint two good boards. It's not not, not a clash, but like two artists be painting yeah. the boards, filming them. And I want to get about 10, I'll get the first 10 done before I start. Yeah, rolling them Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so, I'm your guy, you yeah, just yeah. let me know. Yeah, man. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll the garden, see? Yeah. So you be in my board, you know, you can just do your boards, in boards in my garden, at your own leisure, drink, a laugh, film it. Banter. Yeah. Freedom Records. Yes, freedom. Art in the Garden. Yeah. Sub Low. Yeah. Ops. Black Ops. Ah, oh, listen, they took away my social medias last year. All of them. Fuming. All my social media's gone, Johnny Cash, the Black Ops. So I have to redo them again. Yeah, yeah. So people, please, if you obviously might put them in, you know, give them Yeah, the, I'll put them all in the link. Freedom Music Records, it's Freedom, number three, yeah. D-O-M, Music Records. And then the official Johnny Cash and the Black Ops sublo. These are my Instagrams. I need to build them back up. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I got, I got, they took me off social media. All my Facebook photographs, my family stuff that I can't get back. One day I woke up, I was took off the internet. Phew, man. Freedom of Speech oh, is gone. Damn. Yeah. So now I don't even say nothing. No, I don't even say nothing no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah you know Let the I mean? music do the talk. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, man. So yeah, man. but um, <laughs> no, I have got a new release out now, which is on uh, put out two weeks ago, um, Voices of Africa. So if you're on uh, Apple or Spotify or any platform, type in Voices of Africa EP, Johnny Cash, Freedom Music, 
and you're gonna hear the kind of music I'm making. Nice. Yeah, but Voice of Africa is epic. It's like a movie, man. Nice. You listen to it. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to it. That sounds yeah, great. Yeah, it's, like, it's like an epic. Yeah. So we'll pull the links in and everything. Yeah, man. Gonna, yeah. So Freedom Music is the new label, uh, the new genre, and it's. I'm Johnny Cash back. I'm non stopping, man. Yeah, coming, coming, coming hard. Yeah. Coming see, hard. see, you got an A to Z right here. Whether you know Rich, No Limits, whether you know Black Ops, whether you know Johnny Cash, whether you know Freedom Music, however you want it. And any guys, this man tells you right here. And it won't be the last podcast. Killer, killer, wild, wild. Come on, son. I mean, Johnny, bless my man. Yes. Thank you so much for passing through. No, man, man, definitely. And um, yeah, it's just big up, big, oh, I've got to tell you, big up Stax, big up Liberty Lana, I've got big up all the Black Ops man, big mm-hmm. up Too Real, big mm-hmm. up Charmzy. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else got a big up? Big, oh, wait, watch out for my artist, Strapper. Okay, big up uh, Strapper. No, Strapper, no, listen. Listen, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> watch out, because we, 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 got, we, we got, got album done from a long time ago. Now we we had a few differences. Now we're back together. Nice. We're gonna get that project moving again as well. Yeah, yeah. man. So yeah. Nothing to complain about. and everything yeah, to look forward to. Yeah, man. And I've got to say, big up, big up, big up, Son of Noise. Yes. Big, big up, up Adam. Son of Noise. Yeah. Big up Jason. Big up the Colombians. Yeah. Big up the Brazilians. Big up to you as well, my people. <laughs> yeah. Big up to you. Yes. All day. You know what I mean. So yeah, man. Big up catching all that. Yeah, yeah. man. It's a blessing to come back. Part two here. You know yeah. What I mean? Part two. We're in. You know what I mean. So yeah. yeah. Just go to download Spotify and type in Voices of Africa EP. Mm. All right. There it is. Blessing, man. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. Rich, Johnny Cash in the building. Listen, be safe, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. You stay like your people. Birds! <laughs> Bless me. Wow, that's sick.